Yep, the dreaded no trespassing sign, y'all. But you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna go past today and break the no trespassing sign because I've got a gentleman here from the National Forest Service who is my guide today down to the caves. And he's got the keys, I think. <laughs> For the first time, I get to go past the no trespassing side. Oh my goodness. It's gorgeous out here. Yeah, we just got past the uh, no trespassing side. We're going to head on down to, I guess it's a 700 foot elevation change. So let's, let, let's get on the trail. Okay, we started up at the top of this hill here. And as you can see, it's a pretty, pretty well-defined little road that they got going on here. But this road is not new. Uh, this road was constructed in the, looks like the 30s. By the looks of it, maybe February 5th, someone decided, you know what, let's leave our mark in this beautiful, beautiful valley. We're going down to Batatican. What do you call it, the Batatican cave dwellings? Quiff dwellings. Okay, wow. And they got some more inscriptions over here. This one's kind of hard to read. Okay, but there's one more down here. More graffiti from the workers. This person looked like they were educated. They, they knew how to make uh, the curved nine. Interesting. Onward. Hey everyone, so we're on our way out and we stopped at this uh, lookout, but if you look down below, if you look carefully, there is a river down there, a little stream bed that's pretty much carved all this out. And our guide is telling us this river goes all the way out to Navajo, Navajo Mountain? Navajo Mountain, which you can see right about there, way off in the distance out there. But what a view, folks. You get a chance to come out here, highly recommend it, and please sign up for one of these hikes. They're amazing. No, we're not in Star Wars, folks. We're, we're on a hike out here in Navajo Nation. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're on one of these switchbacks. We're gonna be walking through this little crevice here. You can kind of see down there, but yeah, we're on our way. Good stuff. Absolutely gorgeous out here. The hike is very, eh, it's like a moderate hike. Coming back is going to be a different story, of course, but I'll take it on. It's not bad. Yep. Look closer. Okay. Uh, closer. Okay. There it is. We found some petroglyphs on the way down. Oh my goodness. Y'all, that's something else. Okay. Okay, so here's that petroglyph, okay, right there. But I always try and figure out why would they stop here and go through the trouble of making something like that? When I mean, that's a very small piece. 
it's kind of hard to tell that maybe there was other other uh, rock where it's now tan, and maybe there's more there. But why not over here? You can see right about here. There's a nice little chalkboard. I was trying to. I'm always trying to overthink things, but. Could it have been that water was traveling through here? It looks like there's a lot of water erosion down here. And if that's the case, maybe they were camped here fishing and they decided to, I don't know. It's, it's not meant for us. It's a different time, but it's always try to, I always try to reverse engineer why they do things like this. They mark it for some reason. Okay, enough blobbing. Take a look at that, that cliffside there. The camera hopefully will capture this, but it looks like that everything out there is glowing. Those cliffs are amazing looking. But it's just regular sandstone in the shade, but it looks like it's glowing from here. It's kind of spooky. But <laughs> breathtaking at the same time. This hike is amazing, folks. I highly recommend it. I'm stopping every 10 feet and just gawking. It's, it's something to see. Hope you guys make it. Okay, guys. Check that out. We just flipped this rock over and, uh, or boulder. You can see, uh, well... It's a grinding stone. It's part of the hike. They, they reveal this as you're walking along, but there must have been something that they were cultivating here or gathering. It's kind of hard to, to put in your head what they could have been. Well, let's, let's just call it farming out here or gathering. But they were doing it. And that's why we're city folk and we can't understand this stuff. But I don't know, guys. Could you pick a more beautiful place to, to camp? And I'm, I'm speechless. This is amazing. It comes down to this, survival, food, water. They got that. This is an amazing hike. Okay, we're hiking along here. Got a little ways to go, but I wanted to point out this natural arch on the way out here. That's beautiful. Imagine the noise that made when it was created. <laughs> Lovely hike. Again, very, very moderate hike um, so far. I'm going downhill though, so on the way back might be a little different story, but people, you got to get out here and see this. I'm not seeing very many footprints other than ours out here. I don't know when was the last time they had someone out here, but breathtaking you have to uh, have a guide uh, from the park service take you out here and I recommend it too because there are things out here you don't you don't notice unless they're pointed out by the guides and across the way here is a whole nother cliff that is just Absolutely breathtaking. This is the uh, the cliff side that I was looking at that looks like it's glowing. There's some more of it right here. Looks like it's glowing. Um, it, it's amazing out here, Bill. It's just, you got to get out here. <laughs> I can't put this into words. I really can't. Um, the, I can't even put it in picture. It's, it's too big. You got to see it as a whole. Enough of my jabbing again. Let's get on down the, the path here.
That's part of some pottery, y'all. Just on this trail, and again, if you're not taking a, a guided tour out here, which that's the only way you can get out here, um, you will not see this stuff. You can see the little hand workings, um, part of this pottery. It's, you're looking back in time again, y'all, on this time machine we call Earth. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing me that. That looks kind of staged, doesn't it, guys? I don't think it is, but isn't that cool? But there is a fence, as you can see, all the way across. Wild. And it's open. <laughs> dun dun. What is this? A tool shed. It is a tool shed. It says right there on the door. Can I walk up to it? No. No? Okay. I'm going to go over here then, real quick. It's a modern tool shed right there, y'all. Fire hazard. No smoking. If you made it this far, you better not be a smoker because you're not going. You're not going to make it up. You're not going to make it up. Wow, the smell of these leaves are amazing. Ah, it's refreshing. Here are the trees. These are as you call them aspen. Yes, quake and aspen. Okay. It's beautiful back here. You can also see some of the Douglas fir right in front of us here. Yeah, there she blows. You hear a very upset bird too. <laughs> They're somewhere like, get out of here, we're trying to sleep. But there are also other types of plants that you will see here. So you see a mixture of um, juniper, the pinion pine. There's also sumac here, water birch, and of course, bacon aspen, mm -hmm. Douglas fir up there as well. So this forest that we see here, once again, did not exist when the ancestral pebbles were living here. Okay. Because during that time, they had to clear cut all of this to remove all these different trees to make room for farming. Okay. But originally though, these aspens did exist before they began to settle inside this canyon because they used to be all over this area here. So they're, they're native to this canyon, but they were cleared at one point by yeah. the Native Americans. Okay. Yeah. For grazing. Okay. Yeah. Wild. So about 10,000 years ago during the Ice Age, these trees used to be on top of the canyon. Okay. So it used to be all the way across this whole entire area. 
because back then temperature was cooler mm -hmm. and all was also wetter as well. So this is something that is required to for these trees to exist here. But when the ice age started to slowly come to an end, a lot of the trees that were above the canyon or top of the canyon slowly started to die off. And the ones that survive are the ones that lived here inside the canyon. Interesting. So they are able to survive here because, as you can see, this canyon wall acts like a shield. Yeah. It protects them from the sunlight, so it gives it that really cool environment that they prefer. At the same time, these canyons will also provide moisture for the tree. Because every time it rains or every time it snows, the sandstone will act like a sponge and absorb portions mm -hmm. of those yeah. moisture. Then the water will slowly filter through the sandstone until it reaches a harder surface, such as limestone. Then it begins to pool on top of it and it becomes as a natural spring water that we know today. So it, instead of just rushing down the mountain, it, it will trickle down yes. through like a sponge effect. Yes. Oh, look, we got modern man. Look at this webbing of trees, guys. You can't recreate this. What, what am I looking at? This is amazing. There's two trails. There's a bridge. Yeah. So that one leads to the restroom area. Okay. Is there an outhouse down there? Yeah, there is. Okay. So if you need to go, just let me know. Or we can continue on up. Let's go on up. We'll hit this on the way back. Wild. Look at those that maze of trees we just walked through. It's like a tunnel. That is ominous. Very intimidating. We got going back here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Are you guys seeing that? Uh, oh my goodness. I would hate to be the bloke that took this one over here in the corner. <laughs> Poor guy. Shunned from society. Pushed off to the side. <laughs> Look at these dwellings, folks. Stunning. All in this huge 
arch, which just goes on forever. I mean, we're almost underneath it, but yet we're so far away. I mean, these guys were well sheltered from the elements. You almost don't need a roof out there. There's something on the top. Look at that. There's some man-made piece up there. Look at that. It's like a walkway. It's a big pole out there too. I don't see any way up there other than that pole, but who's gonna climb that? This is amazing. Look at these leaves blowing in the air. They're just tossing around. It's coming from these trees down here. Whatever these, uh, these are. Stunning place. Very magical. The amount of work that went into putting these up uh, and the guts to get up there to do it is pretty amazing. Is this as far as we go? We can oh, we are? Okay. Guys and gals, thanks for coming along. What are these? What is this? It's a round leaf buffalo berry bush. A what? Round leaf buffalo berry bush. Buffalo berry bush. A round leaf buffalo berry bush. They're everywhere out here. I can't believe we get to go closer to this thing. I'm trying to be as steady as possible as we creep along here, but it's very uh, uneven at this point. So pardon me. I also have a huge backpack on. Thank you, Brad Hamill, for the backpack. Oh. Okay. All right. A little seepage going on. Yep, it's moist, y'all. It's moist. here too, huh? Okay, so we have, we have something right above us here at the end of the trail. A wall with a roof sitting underneath. The overhang, okay? No joke. It has a round shape to it as well right at this end. You know, some of these rocks probably were up there at one point. I'm referring to these here. I thought I heard whistling. <laughs> Don't look 
coupler. Do not look up. You'll freak out. Okay, go further over to the left. There's something in there. Let's see if I can bump the expo. Yeah, there it is. You see the doorway at the top, dead center now. Well, I just lost it. I'm forcing the overexposure so we can see that. But man, is it worth it? Yeah. The, uh, the tour guide said I could spend the night up here in a room, so I'm gonna pick that one right there. <laughs> So at one point, I guess you could go up further, right? Yeah. But it's too, it needs work, apparently. Well, there has a rock fall. Yeah, yeah, and when there's a rock fall, y'all, <laughs> you don't want to be in here. Oh goodness, I didn't even notice that. The, the guy just pointed out there's a, right behind the second sign back there, where the stairs are. Well, they didn't plan that. Amazing. An amazing place. from some amazing people who decided to make this their home. And we do not know why they left. There have been some theories of why they left, but so far I never had Yeah. Look at the view they had, y'all. This is a pretty steep uh, hill here, or not a cliff, but you know what I'm talking about. It's like a waste pile, okay, from above us. But look at these, the valley of trees we have here. Thanks for coming with us, everyone. If you get a chance, I strongly recommend this. What an amazing hike. Okay, before we go, I just noticed and the guide has been pointing out everything here. These little bits of pottery are, yes, from this site. And there's larger bits over here. You can kind of see the, the curvature of some of it. And some of the intricate designs that were on them too. And I'll show you more of this in the visitor center. They have a lot on display there that were actually, um, well, from here. You can even see some of the coloring, that orange right there in the piece in the center. Very interesting. And there was a piece right down here where I was sitting. <laughs> Unfortunately, I should, probably shouldn't have sat there. Look at that. Ancient man was molding this. This is amazing. I'm so lucky to be able to see this in person. I also found a... Uh, piece of charcoal here. You can see this little black piece right here. They were using everything that they had out here. Stunning. You guys, if you don't make it out here, you're missing out. Yeah, it's another piece of pottery. It's curved. You can see the curvature of it. It's man-made right there. And here you can see the piece of corn. What? There is corn out here. Holy crap. It's a corn husk, y'all. I think that's what you call it. Corn cob. Corn cob, excuse me. The only corn I used to know came from a supermarket. So that explains the grinding stone. They grew corn through the whole entire area here. Do they find any evidence down in the valley here of human activity at all? No. Because originally, this land that we see in front of us would have been much higher up. Okay. What we see in front of us due to years of erosion. Uh, erosion taking it away. Okay. And right above us, where a waterfall will form. And that's what caused the steep cutting. 
Got ya. Just it dropping off the cliff would gouged it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's go up to the visitor center, y'all. It's back around the corner and around there. <laughs> it's a lot longer than it looks, y'all. But okay, so we're just across the way from the dwellings, and on this side of the wall, there's a petroglyph, y'all. Very faint. You can slightly make it out. There's another one right here. Let me see if I can get a little closer to it. There you go. And one. Right here. So you gotta stand far away from it to be able to see this one. Okay, there's a box there. Let's see, one second, let me get my bearings up. There's a box right here, but there's another one he's pointing out. So you gotta stand right here to be able to see it. And looks directly straight up. You'll see a white face. Oh my! Ooh. Careful. If you look closely, right about the 12 o'clock, it's going to the center. I'll zoom in on it. I'm just trying not to fall over. But yeah, it looks like a. It looks like the same guy, but no arms or legs. He's got a little penis too. A chode. That's amazing. It's like a garden up here. <laughs> Look at this tree. The dwellings across the way. But this is where they're finding some petroglyphs up here, y'all. This is part of the of the uh, hike. This is blowing me away. You know me, guys. I love petroglyphs. That's scary. That is really scary looking straight up like that, y'all. Oh God, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little blown away by this. I didn't know I was coming up here, so I think he wants me to come up here and take a look at the, some of the dwellings. There's some structures over here too, off to the right, excuse me, to the left. I can't think. I'm a little starstruck <laughs> in a way. What are these up here? Uh-oh. Rockfall. These will be more residential areas where people would store, either live or store food at. And right behind, you can see more of them. <gasps> oh my god. You guys see that? I'm sorry, I just had to come over my mouth. I'm in a little awe here. Look at this. If you look where the large man's at, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see handprints. Right there. Yep, there's a handprint right dead center. Oh yeah, I do see them. There they are. Is that paint? What is that? How did they get it to stick so long? We don't even have paints these days. They'll last that long. <laughs> So most of it is just do, as I said before, the sandstone has these little pores that will absorb. Yeah, right here. There's one right here too. This I've seen before. I've seen these circles within circles with a dot in the center. You see that in Death Valley, uh, Valley of Fire, I believe. Well, if you look carefully, it's not so much a dot. It kind of makes like a circle. Okay like a roundabout spiral. Look at that. So these symbols that we see in front of us do have a meaning. They do? Okay. So the ones to the far left hand over here where you see an animal represents the deer clan. The <laughs> large man with the circle, with the large circle surrounding him represents the fire clan. The one over here that looks like a four-way pie chart represents the flute clan and the one next to it represents the water clan. Oh, there, there's another one over there. Oh, I didn't even see that. This one here, y'all. Look at this. It's very faint, but 
Yeah, looks like a setting sun. So this one does, I kind of like divide it into four parts. So look carefully, you can see that division where they draw the line in the, right in the center of the circle. Okay. Yeah, I see it halfway through. It's like a horizon line. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Really interesting. This is blowing me away. So how far down does this go? Does, this, does it, it end right here? It stops right there. Oh, the trail keeps going? You're joking. I didn't know I was coming up here, everyone, so. <laughs> Let's follow the leader here. I hate these plants. From where you're standing. Ah, there's a there's an elk. Or some kind of yeah, horned petroglyph. Is that what I'm looking? Is that right? Uh yeah, there it is. And there's two of them. Three of them. Four. Four? Yep. Holy crap. <laughs> I have not seen so many petroglyphs like this in my life in one spot. Well, I shouldn't say that. I have, but not in a place like this. There must have been dwellings here then, you think? Where the petroglyphs are? Here, probably, but we're not too sure. Did they find petroglyphs in the dwelling area at all? Or in that direction? Uh, no, they did not. They haven't, okay. But if you look carefully, where you see this long extension post, yeah. if you follow that along the ridge line there, you'll see more structures on top. Yeah, I did see that. What is that up there? And how do you get up there? That post that was their ladder. You're joking. Someone scaled that little ladder. Mm -hmm. They went up that pole, y'all, and that's how they accessed this top layer that I was looking at earlier. What would the who would live all the way up there? Mm, probably just might have been more storage, grain storage. Okay. The large portion of the buildings that we see that still stand today is mostly just storage room, granary, just where they will store their food. Got you. Okay. So it's just not found here. They built a lot of these grain stores throughout this whole entire canyon network. Because they had to basically grow enough or forage for enough food to not just survive through the winter, but to also survive for one entire year. Because in some cases, they will have a crop failure due to drought. Got ya. So that's why they need so many stores to store their food. A buffer. Mm -hmm. Okay. A food buffer. Okay, just imagine, people, there's a dude standing here, okay? In these, this area, creating this piece of art on the wall. That just blows me away. If any of my artwork lasted as long as this, I'd be a happy man. Look at that. It's behind glass for good reason. <laughs> Rare stuff. I'm inside the visitor center here at the Navajo Nation's uh, National Park, or Navajo Nas National Park. Oh, here is some more. Amazing. Look at the artwork on that. Details.
very symmetrical, or balanced, I should say. Pottery bits. They also have a, <coughs> a model of Batatakin. Ledge house. Gives you some idea of how it's laid out, looking from top down. This is where the petroglyphs were. Pretty amazing. They also have a reproduction of what one of those looks like inside. One of the rooms of uh, the Tatican. Say, but you get the gist. Navajo National Monument, folks. Visitor Center. That that about concludes my trip here. I'm gonna head on down the road. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully, you guys got something out of that. Beautiful hike. Catch you.